Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna take a look at my orchid seed pot, but also talk a little bit about what happens after an orchid flower is pollinated, how much time it takes for the seed pot to ripen, and of course we'll see how the seeds look like. I have to tell you, it's a premiere for me as well. I've never seen orchid seeds in person. Now before we get to the subject, I will link you down below to a video in which I talk more about how orchid seeds are sown, why it's so hard to actually propagate orchids through seeds ourselves, how it's usually done, and most importantly, what you should be wary of when purchasing something from eBay, especially orchid seeds. Most of the times they're not orchid seeds. Alrighty, but today we have a seed pot. Now how did this happen? Well, it's pretty funny. I actually didn't really pollinate this flower myself. However, it is possible for orchid flowers to be pollinated in our house. Pollinating orchid flowers is really easy and there are a ton of videos on YouTube showing you exactly how, including me. I need to have a video on that as well. So first of all, for an orchid to develop a seed pot, it first needs to be fertile and not sterile. Sadly, some beautiful hybrids on the market are sterile, so they cannot really produce a seed pot. So as I was saying, due to hybridization, some traits of orchids have been lost and in some cases, fertility altogether has been lost. Sometimes it might happen that a seed pot will be formed, but it will not grow to maturity, it will not ripen. So before anything, the two orchids that are crossed need to be fertile. After pollination takes place, a very dramatic thing happens. The flower starts to fade. And this happens really fast. About two days after, you will see that the flower will start to fade. Some orchid flowers fade even if you only remove the pollen. But if flowers did receive pollen, they will shed very, very fast. And this was the case with my orchid. I didn't pollinate it, it pollinated itself. While the bud was forming, maybe it suffered a little bit of a mutation and the arrangement of all the structures inside the flower favorized pollination. So my flower actually didn't even get to fully open and it already started to fade because it was pollinated. Until I realized what was happening, it took about a week because the seed pod forms in time. This section that you see right now, very swollen, which contains the seed, used to be the width of this very thin section. In about a week, I noticed it starting to swell up and I knew what was going on. So once orchids are pollinated, they will drop their flowers. In some cases, the petals will still remain attached, but they will dry up. And the thin stem right before the petals and sepals begin, we call this an ovary, will start to swell up really, really slow. Now until this part becomes mature and ripe, it can take quite a few months. For me, it took about two months, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe three, but this can depend on individual orchids. It can also depend on season and environment. The warmer it is, the faster the seed pod will develop as well. Now, if we would have been interested in saving these seeds and sow them, we would have had to remove the pot before it actually cracked open and then go through the sterilization processes and all of those fun stuff. Being that I was not interested in it, a few days ago I noticed that it started to crack open. Another thing that I've noticed with my orchid is that it did not start new growth production until the seed pod cracked. It is just now that I am noticing a new growth starting to grow here at the base of the new pseudobulb, but all of this time while the seed pod developed, this orchid pretty much stood still. So you might want to keep that in mind and not freak out if your orchid doesn't start new growth. If you're not okay with your orchid staling for a little bit, might as well not pollinate it just for amusement. But I think it is now time to cut the seed pot, open it up and look at the seeds. So I've already sterilized my pair of pruners using alcohol and a flame. And now I'm just gonna snip this little stem and detach the seed pot. Now, even though I am almost convinced nothing will sprout from these seeds, Actually, I want to try to put them on the top of the medium in the same pot with the mother orchid. I'm really not expecting anything to grow, but I don't want to throw this in the trash simply because it's orchid seeds and I don't feel good throwing it away. So not expecting anything, but I'm not going to throw away the seeds. Alrighty, I hope you will be able to see on this cardboard. If not, I'm going to put them on my tray. Let us try to open up the seed pod and hopefully they will not start flying around. Oh, this is actually pretty stiff. So I've removed a section of the seed pod and now let's take a closer look at it. As you can see inside, the seeds are displaced 
on a strip. If we take a look at the other parts of the seed pod, you can see on the surface that it has these ridges. Well, actually the seeds are located in each ridge dispersed in a straight line. So it's not like they are everywhere. At this point, I cannot really tell of each individual seed. Each seed pod can contain, I think, millions of seeds and they are so, so tiny, just like a grain of dust. Grains of sand are actually bigger than seed pods. At this point, you might start to understand why they cannot survive if we just sprinkle them on the medium or somewhere else. They are not protected by that shell that usually seeds are protected by. Not only does the shell that's one and also they do not have any nutritious substances to start up with. They are bare. In nature, they actually rely on a symbiotic relationship with a fungus. And P.S. I know some of you keep mentioning about fungi and mushrooms in the comment section. Not all mushrooms or fungi are good for orchids. Some of them are parasitic and some of them will simply compete with the orchids. So there we go. These are the seeds of our orchid. And to be honest, I kind of was expecting them to burst like a cloud of dust, but no, it's not the case. So what I am tempted to do now is to actually remove them from the seed pod, at least this section, and take a look at them, try to see them individually on this cardboard. This might fail, and I think at this point I might use my pruners. Okay, they're actually not as dusty as I expected. My camera is not a macro camera, but hopefully you can see it is like a powder. So there they are on my finger. It is just like pollen, to be honest, or like dust. They're incredibly tiny. So what I'll do right now is just sprinkle these seeds on top of my orchid medium. I think we looked at them enough. This is how they look like, and now you know what to search for if you want to buy orchid seeds. Some nurseries do offer them for sale, but there are many vendors, especially on eBay, which are not legit and will sell you all sorts of other seeds in the place of orchid seeds. This is how they should look like, at least the epiphytic ones. I'm not entirely sure about terrestrials, but yeah, if you see a seed the size of a pea, that's not an orchid seed, most probably. Okay, so let's just sprinkle these seeds on the medium. There are so many seeds here, but please don't raise your hopes high and don't understand that if you do this, it will work and you'll have orchid seedlings. There might be a million to one chances of any of these seeds actually sprouting anything, if any chance. I'm not entirely sure. So keep that in mind and don't make false hope. There we go, we're all done. My seed pot is empty and you know what? If a miracle happens, you guys will be the first ones to know, but I doubt it. Now, what will this orchid do? Well, it will continue to grow normally just like it did until now. And fingers crossed, it will not self-pollinate again because honestly, it is so hard to obtain viable orchid seedlings without a sterile environment and the nutritious medium that really all of this staling is not worth it for me. Generally, cat leaf orchids and orchids in general do not self-pollinate unless they are that type of species. This was just a glitch, a mistake that I truly hope will not happen again because I really want to enjoy the beautiful blooms. And that concludes the video of today. Remember to check out the description if you like to learn even more about orchid seeds. Nowadays, you can obtain an orchid seed pod and send it to a nursery. They will sow it for you. It will take quite a lot of years and it's not all that cheap. But the options are there. So if you're interested in that, definitely do research it, check it out, see what nurseries provide these services. I think in Europe, it's a Royal K in Germany, if I'm not mistaken. And I think the prices go towards the 100 euros per batch. So yeah, if you're interested in cross-pollinating orchids and growing some seedlings, definitely you do have some options if you don't wanna hassle yourself. So alrighty guys, this was the topic and the video for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, you know the drill, a thumbs up and a share are wonderful. And if you like to watch other orchid videos from me on a regular basis, simply subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye. Alrighty, so due to the fact that the video of today is a little bit too long, I'm gonna tell the phone story tomorrow or the day after, I don't know, I filmed it already. It's a bit long, so you know, I'll just do it another time. But today, for all of you who stick around for outros, I wanna give you a little sneak peek of my Vanda Denisoniana 
Oh wow, look at her, isn't she the prettiest thing ever? Now, give it my Vanda is not the yellow variety or orange variety which I initially wanted and I will still purchase it at some point, I do like orange. Anyway, it's the cream shine torrent, so the color is not that really really vivid yellow, but it's not bad, I like it, however. I had the luck, although not sure if I can call it like that. Anyway, this morning at 3 o'clock in the morning, I woke up because I was not feeling well. So what does Danny do when she doesn't feel well? She comes on the terrace and goes in the greenhouse. Of course, what, what else can I do? So I come in the greenhouse, the greenhouse was smelling like nothing else. I'm not gonna give it away, I'm not gonna tell you how it smells like. And all of that beautiful smell was coming from this one. So there we go. The Vanda Denisoniana is a nighttime fragrant orchid and it does not smell like Brasovolas one bit. Now I can't believe I didn't know that. I didn't read this about this orchid. I was expecting it to smell during daytime and of course in daytime there's almost almost no fragrance. So I wouldn't have known if I didn't feel sick this morning. <laughs> so there you go. There's a silver lining in everything.